Dr. Pradeep Thomas is a leading academic in the area of communication and social change, communication rights, religion and media and the political economy of communications in India. He is the co-director of the Centre for Communication and Social Change at the University of Queensland in Australia. He was elected as the Vice President of the International Association for Media and Communication Research in July 2012. What do you think is the relevance and purpose of uh, community media in today's changing uh, media landscape? I think, you know, despite the fact that we have you know, so many different types of media, I think one can still say that the community sector is under-resourced, right? and that there needs to be that kind of diversity of views that, that is necessary for a, for a democracy. Right? So in a country like India, for example, the fact that we've, we have you know, multiple you know, possibilities for community media, I think is a fantastic thing. You know, I think in some places, in some instances, it's slow going, in others things are picking up. So I think India stands as a kind of, I think, a beacon in South Asia for, you know, I think Naipaul is the one who said that India is a land of a million mutinies. And it's very true, you know, if, uh, I, my bread and butter in terms of my, my writing is, is India because of the fact that there are so many different types of community-based uh, media opportunities. And, right. yeah. It's interesting that you said that because I was just going to ask you about uh, a drawing from the main, uh, conference's main theme, which is the region to try and understand how relevant community media is to India and uh, the South Asian region, in your opinion? Well, I think it's incredibly important because uh, when radio, of course, of course, you know, we know that Nepal is the one who started off this whole process and then India followed suit. Um, and I think it's now we have enough good examples of community radio that is actually connecting to community, right? Not only community radio, but today we were discussing or listening about Kabarla area, you know, these kinds of projects that are fantastic, you know, because, and if you really look around the world, there are very few examples of these kinds of things. Right. And, you know, they really deal with local issues and that makes a lot of difference. Yeah. So. Right. And what do you think are the challenges that uh, practitioners and policy makers face, uh, you know, in promoting See, something like this? The issue, of course, in a country like ours is that, you know, you have to deal with the entrenched understandings of what media is and who should have access and all this kind of stuff, right? And although one can say that it's changing, the reality is that the community sector has taken a long time to be where it's at at the moment because of the fact that I think governments have not been very supportive of the idea of community wanting media kind of stuff. So community radio, for example, is a good example, right? I mean, the old days, it took such a, you know, you have to go through so many hoops to get a license, right? Today, it's a little better. But the issue is, I think, the government still is restricting access to certain types of media. And that, that's an issue. I mean, it's... Of course, easier the press sector than the broadcasting sector. So, Right, and why do you think that uh, uh, difference uh, is there? It's a mindset, no? I mean, mindset in the sense that, you know, I mean, you know, of course, with FM radio, they've earned a lot of money. It's a revenue-based model. Right. They've heard, they've learned. And some of, some of those folks don't like the community sector getting it for free, right? And that's an issue. That's an issue. The commercial guys don't like the community radio sector at all, all over the world. Yeah, because they look at the community radio sector as, you know, these special guys who've got things for free. And like us, you know, we've had to work hard and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I mean, I really think that in a country like, you know, in India that subsidizes welfare and rights for people, whether it's employment, there's no reason why, can't, why they shouldn't be subsidizing, you know, access to communications. So, right. Yeah. right. And uh, uh, talking of the state, how, what, how in, uh, integral is the role of the state uh, especially in the light of all the corporatization and globalization that's happening in media consolidation? I really think they play a fundamentally important role. Um, you know, whether um, whether they, they, they look at that challenge in the right positive kind of way is another thing altogether. I think they've, I think the problem in our country is that we, you know, the state has also tasted money, right? And the issue of course is whether they now recognize the fact that you have a community sector that also needs support. Right. That's that's the key issue. And of course, they're under pressure, right? Um, in a country like India, the state is under pressure from commercial interests all the time, right? Um, we need to have champions. We need to have at least, you know, and that's how it works, really. If you have one or two champions in the state who are supportive of the community media sector, it becomes so much more easier. Right. If you don't have them, then, you know, it takes so much longer for these things to kind of... Right. Yeah. And uh, news is banned on community radio and private radio in India. Your hmm. thoughts on that and... I mean, these are very silly kinds of things, you know, I mean, they should just open it up. I mean, what's the point? Um, I think, you know, I think sooner than later they'll relent on these kinds of things, right? And I think at the moment, I think there's a, 
I think they're going to open it out. That's what I'd heard that they are going to open out and let uh, FM radio stations broadcast news and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you, you know, every when you know, it's it's a it's it's absurd in some ways because you have the private folks who are involved in the news news print business, right? They're in the business of producing news, and there are thousands of papers doing, you know, also. So why why restrict the community sector or why restrict the commercial radio sector not providing news? I mean, I don't understand the logic behind that at all. They're scared in terms of they they say things like, you know, we worry about them saying something about a minority, all this kind of stuff, right? And I think people are mature enough to do that. Of course, you'll find idiots all over the place, and this is an issue that even the community media sector has to deal with the radio sector i mean if you give a radio license to a group that is anti minority and that's you know that's a problematic one but then these are a small minority i think you know, the majority are mature and okay okay thank you so much thank that's you thanks, thanks. Thank you.